Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. Welcome back to my channel. How many of you out there are avid gardeners? I'm sure many of you will have picked up gardening during the pandemic. For me, I grew up in a family of gardeners. I grew up helping my grandma out with her vegetable patch and feasting on her ripe tomatoes and snacking on her sweet peas that I'd helped to harvest. I only actually got into growing things a few years ago actually. When I lived in Madrid, I became really curious about hydroponics where you grow plants without soil in just water and nutrients. In particular, I felt that hydroponics would be the most likely source of food we would be able to sustain in space. I actually successfully grew so much lettuce and not only was it delicious, I was particularly pleased that I didn't kill them in the dry climate of Madrid. Right now, I'm growing a range of things in my garden from blueberries and raspberries to lettuce and mint. But that's not what this video is about. Today, I wanted to talk about the fact that scientists have now successfully grown in soil from the moon. So let's start. Over the course of the Apollo moon landing, so between 1969 and 1972, the Apollo astronauts brought to Earth approximately 360 kilograms of lunar rock and soil. Whilst this was originally sealed away in vacuum containers, over time the seals have slowly deteriorated and air has been able to leak in, unfortunately. This has contaminated the samples. Since then, only two other countries have managed to obtain sample returns from the moon. Scientists from the University of Florida were given four grams of the Apollo soil, or regolith, with each gram from a different Apollo mission and different lunar sites. The team attempted to grow Arabidopsis thaliana, more commonly known as a type of cress in the lunar soil that they had received, with each cress seed having access to just one gram of the soil, actually less. They compared it to cress grown in a volcanic ash-based soil. Their seeds sprouted after just two days. And what they found was that the plants that grew in the lunar soil were much smaller, grew slower, and showed signs of stress, such as pigmentation, in comparison to plants grown in the volcanic ash. Now, if humans are ever going to establish a base on the moon, or even Mars, which there are plans to do, then they will have to grow their own food. And since the average cost of launching just one kilogram into space is about $50,000, it's probably not a great idea to take up all of our soil with us. We need to use lunar or even Martian soil. But in my opinion, hydroponics is by far the best way to go. In any case, these scientists have just proved that it is possible, although, far inferior to grow crops in lunar soil. Whilst the experimental results are amazing, they still use very tiny amounts of soil. And we know that different areas um, that the soil came from will have slightly different compositions. So you don't expect to see all the plants performing the same. Now, this isn't the first time people have attempted to grow plants in lunar soil. Scientists have successfully grew rocket, tomato, wheat, chives, leek, and even more in lunar or even sometimes Martian simulated soil for many years now. But note the word simulated. These crops grew in soil that had been manufactured to be like the soil on the moon and on Mars. So it's not so surprising that it worked, but it still does baffle me that it actually does work on the real deal, the real lunar soil. We know on Earth that organic matter is a vital part of soil quality needed for plant growth, but lunar soil doesn't contain any organic matter. These results are extremely exciting, but we are still a way away from farming on the moon. These experiments have been carried out on Earth's gravity and in Earth's atmospheric conditions. It's still uncertain whether plants can withstand the radiation levels on the moon, the variation in temperature, or even the differences in light level. 
But we should be quick. If humans are to return to the moon by 2025 as planned, then we need to get growing. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. I'll put the links to the interesting papers in the description box below. But in the meanwhile, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.